I just got back from COD Next, where I got to play two hours of Modern Warfare 3 Warzone on the new Urzikstan map. Now, these weren't exactly normal games. I was playing against the likes of Symphony, Huskers, B. Bredman, Biffle. I got killed by every single one of them. But I did also get to explore the map, try out the new movement, try out a few of the new features, and I had an absolute blast. Like, I really enjoyed it. And this year, while I'm pretty sure I'm going to be concentrating on zombies for my content, kind of switching over from DMZ to zombies, and there'll be a video about that very, very soon. So make sure you subscribe, turn your notifications on, all of that good stuff. I'm also going to be getting back into Warzone Battle Royale because I had an absolute blast on this map. I really enjoyed the map. And there's quite a few new changes to Warzone, which while they might sound kind of relatively minor, they actually really changed the experience. In this video I'm going to talk through a bunch of the different changes that they talked about and they showed off and we got to experience and I'm also going to show you a bunch of the gameplay just kind of raw gameplay for this video so you can see really how it plays how the map plays and how we got to move around. With this video in particular if you have any questions about the new Warzone map and about the changes that they've made leave them down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Not only have I had a chance to play the game but I've also had a chance to talk to Ted Timmins the creative director of Warzone as well as a bunch of the other developers so if you want to know something about what we were shown and what they were talking about at COD next let me know and I'll do my best to answer you. Right let's get going. A big part of this Warzone update is not actually the new map. A huge part of it is just that all of those gameplay changes that are in Mon Warfare 3 are coming to Warzone. A few of them have been modified slightly, so we don't get things like the trainers and the gloves and the vests and stuff like that. Instead, we have the normal perk briefcases that we've had in Warzone 2 for a while now. But most of the other things to do with the movement, the way you can move the gun around, all of that stuff is going to be a big part of Warzone now. So that means that the advanced ADS is in. This is a thing where you can turn your gun on its side rather than looking down the sights. And that means ADS time's a little bit quicker. I think movement's a little bit quicker with those guns. And it's super useful if you're in like a confined space with a larger weapon. You can just turn it on its side on a controller by default. You hold the left trigger in and press down on the D-pad. But you can change it to be like the melee so you don't have to take your thumb off the left stick or something like that if you want to. And it really does feel like it makes guns a lot more maneuverable. It's super useful in Warzone if you do something like hot dropping into a building and the first gun you pick up is something like a battle rifle or an LMG, like something big and huge you wouldn't normally use in a building. You can put it in that mode and then you can move around. Your vision isn't obstructed by the sight and things like that. You're not into super slow ADS. So you've still got a fighting chance against someone that picks up something like an SMG or a shotgun. Speaking of the shotguns, by the way, they're not very good. At least the shotguns that we got to try in Warzone are part of the floor loot because we didn't get to use loadouts or anything like that in Warzone. They just didn't seem very good. In multiplayer, I did have a chance to try out the new shotguns. They didn't have any of the old ones, I don't think. But the new shotguns didn't feel very powerful either. So while all of the Modern Warfare 2 shotguns are moving forward, so the Lockwood with that double barrel thing that it's got at the moment is absolutely crazy, that'll still be in it. But the new shotguns, yeah, they're not terribly exciting. It also means things like slide cancelling are in. Now, I've heard lots of people super excited about this, super happy about it. When Ted Timmons announced it on stage when we had our briefing thing before COD Next, there was like a big cheer from loads of people. But I wouldn't say it's back exactly. I don't think it feels like Warzone wanted. In Warzone 1, you felt super nippy to the point where it almost felt like you were disconnected from the map. Once you got good at slide cancelling, it felt like you were sliding around the place on ice or something like that. In this version of it, in Mon Warfare 3's Warzone, it still feels weighty like you do in Warzone 2. It feels like you've got quite a lot of inertia. And when you start sliding, the actual slide is super fast. But then when you cancel it and go back to running, it feels quite slow still. Now, they made a big deal in the presentation about mantling being quite different and mantling being connected to your speed. So if you're at a full tactical sprint in your mantle, you'll just hop over things. And I think that'll be really useful if you're trying to go through like ground floor windows and stuff like that. But in game, I really didn't feel that nimble and fast. Really what happened when I got into fights against players who were super good, like I said, I was fighting against people like B. Bredman. He chased me into a house and absolutely slaughtered me. 
he was kind of able to move into a position to fight me and then start kind of spinning around, like sliding around almost on the spot, breaking my aim, making it much harder for me to shoot him, but it didn't feel like he was getting around. So whereas in Warzone 1, you could use all of this movement for some crazy traversal and for kind of getting out of a situation, something like that. In this version of it, in Mon Warfare Freeze Warzone, it still feels like you're kind of slow and sluggish. Now for me personally, I'm not sure if that's a bad thing. I quite like the immersive side of games. I quite like it feeling quite atmospheric and feeling like you're connected to the world is awesome. I really like that kind of thing. But I think some people might be surprised when they think that it's going back to Warzone 1, it's going back to the way things were. And it's not quite like that. Now, obviously you need to take everything I'm saying with a massive grain of salt because I am not a movement king. I'm not the sort of person that would be slide cancelling everywhere. I always kind of resented it and saw it as a bit of a glitch that made for a bigger skill gap and we'll talk more about that later. But it made for a bigger skill gap for people that could take advantage of it and had learned how to do it and had practiced it compared to people that were just playing the game kind of the way it was intended. This is now a situation with Modern Warfare 3 where they obviously intend for people to slide cancel. They intend for people to move like this. But I'm wondering, like, is the game ever going to teach you how to do it? Is there going to be something in the campaign where they're like, hey, you can move like this now and it's really good for avoiding enemy fire or it's really good for confusing people or something like that? I'm pretty sure they're not. So we're going to be in this very weird situation where it's almost like a secret way of controlling the game, which you learn from watching YouTube videos and, you know, TikTok tutorials and things like that, compared to the people that just buy the game or, in Warzone's case, download the game and give it a try. They're not going to know how to do that. And I, I'm personally not a big fan of that. But again, I know some people are a huge fan of the skill gap and they love that kind of stuff. I think it'll be super interesting once everyone gets back from COD Next, everyone starts editing their videos to hear the perspectives from different kinds of players. I'm really interested to know what the people who are really good at this stuff, how they felt about it. I was sitting next to Phase Testy when I was in COD Next and he really enjoyed it. He really thought that that was great. He enjoyed the sniping and stuff like that. So there's definitely people that like it a lot and, you know, I'll probably be in a minority and I'm okay with that. I don't mind being, at least in terms of content creators, the odd one out of stuff like that where I maybe, I mean, to be honest, I kind of preferred Mon Warfare 2's and Warzone 2's movement where it was kind of slow and a bit more grounded and you didn't have things like slide cancelling and not too much bunny hopping and drop shotting. And I kind of preferred Warzone 1's movement where it was a lot faster and then it was kind of completely detached from reality. You know, you were just sliding around all over the place. I didn't like that as much as Warzone 2, but I still kind of preferred it to what this was, the Modern Warfare 3 Warzone, where it was a weird kind of halfway point. Maybe it's just that I'm not used to it. Maybe I just wasn't used to it and it felt a bit alien to me and that's why I didn't like it so much. But anyway, enough about movement. Let's talk about some of the other, maybe more subtle changes that people might not have noticed, but Raven did point out to us in the briefing. One thing that got a cheer from everybody was that stims increase speed again. So stims make your attack sprint faster. If you want to go into a fight now, you might use a stim just to give you that little edge, to give you a bit faster movement. I didn't try this out myself, so when I was talking about things feeling a bit more sluggish, maybe that's why, maybe they're going to rely on things like stims or battle rage, stuff like that, making you feel a bit faster. Um, I think the idea behind it, at least from what they were saying, is that they don't want people to just take smokes as their tactical by default. I think a lot of competitive players in particular were really keen on just using smoke grenades all the time and they're moving away from that a little bit so stims are now more useful. There's also a few other things in that tactical slot that might be good. There's like a proximity mine type thing. I never got a kill with it but it was super useful just kind of in the same way that a cluster mine is where you could put it in an entrance and at least it would tell you when someone was trying to deal with it or someone ran through it and I did have people run through it in the same way that like the new guardian sentry you know the thing that sends out energy waves that's meant to slow someone down people could just run straight through them but at least you would get a little bit of a notification that they were there so in the same way that you use a flashbang or a stun grenade to check if someone's in a building it's that kind of thing where they were super useful for information gathering and it'll be interesting to see if these kind of things make smokes not the meta as the tactical choice anymore 
one change that was actually huge in practice is that now people show up as red dots again if they're firing unsuppressed weapons in Warzone and in multiplayer too, but that change has come across to Warzone. Now this is massive, like for the kind of just average time while you're walking around in Warzone, it felt very much like you were constantly seeing where other battles were going on around you, where people were fighting, and it made it very easy to third party people. Now again, this was kind of a good thing in some ways, especially because I think it made the mid game a lot less boring. It was super easy to find people because I was trying to get like content for these videos. I was like constantly trying to look for fights as I was going around. And that was way easier than it has been in Warzone 2 so far. I think in Warzone 2, there's a bit of a problem that you kind of have the drop initially and there's some action there. And then there's like 10 minutes of nothing happening unless you really go out of your way to like get a helicopter or do a bunch of hunt squad contracts like bounties and stuff like that. And then the end of the game is exciting again. In what I played of Modern Warfare 3 Warzone, it really did feel like that mid game was much more exciting. And they have done other things to try and help with that, like the gas circles close in much faster, they've kind of tweaked the timing, and they said that in the version that we got to play, they still weren't quite happy with that. They think they might go further, they might tweak it a little bit more just to try and keep that pace up, to stop the games from having these dead moments. I think for me, when Warzone first came out, when Blackout first came out really, one of the big things that differentiated it from games like PUBG was that it was fast, that it was exciting all the way through. You know, in PUBG, you could easily have 20 minutes where you're essentially just looting and wandering around. In Warzone, especially in Warzone 1, it felt like games were really, really quick and there was a fast pace all the way through it. And that definitely feels like that's come back a little bit with Modern Warfare 3 Warzone. There is, of course, a downside, like most of the things I'm going to talk about today, and a downside, and maybe the reason why they didn't do this in Warzone 2 originally, is that you get third partied so often. Like, every time you start shooting, if you don't have a suppressor on, there's a fairly decent chance another squad is going to roll up and attack you while you're weak. Now, this has the knock-on effect of meaning that suppressors are basically compulsory, like they have been in DMZ for the last year, really, where you basically need to have a suppressor, otherwise you're in so much danger, it's not really worth it. Like, it's not worth putting on a flash hider or a compensator. I'm not a big fan of that. I know lots of you who have seen my streams will have heard me ranting many times about the gunsmith and how there's like hundreds of attachments, but when you start getting pushed to just using one, you know, like how everyone uses the F-Tag Ripper foregrip and things like that, I think it kind of defeats the point of having all of these. I would much prefer if like there was a reason to have other things, like maybe the recoil was so strong, you wanted to use a compensator for it, or the muzzle flash was so bright it made it hard to look at what you're aiming at, so you wanted to use a flash hider. In my time with Mon Warfare Free for Warzone, I kind of just put a suppressor on and then that was fine. Whenever I had a weapon with a suppressor, it was just like, oh yeah, this is the correct choice, which is a little bit of a shame. You know, it makes me wonder why you would ever use those other attachments. Apologies if my voice is going, by the way, I've been talking pretty much nonstop all week. So yeah, this is a little bit of a struggle. I'm getting pretty tired now. Right, on to a change that is absolutely amazing. I loved it. I thought it was brilliant and I'm so glad they've done it. There's no downside to this one. Ammo is now in a separate slot in your backpack. You have dedicated ammo slots in your backpack for ammo. You can put ammo in there for all of the different types, you know, SMG, assault rifle, shotguns, um, sniper rifles and rockets. And you can carry all of those without a problem. Now this is awesome, especially if you play in a squad, so you can carry ammo for other people. You know, one person in your team is using a sniper rifle. Everyone can have some sniper rifle in their bag ready for them. And if you want to add more ammo, because ammo has like a stack limit, so I think for like assault rifle ammo, it's like 200 rounds, I think. Then you can use the other slots in your backpack that are more sort of multi-use, where you could put like self-revives or kill streaks or ammo, things like that. That's a really, really cool change. I really, really like that, and I think that's absolutely awesome. It stops that thing from like you having to decide whether you want to take ammo or whether you want to take plates. Instead, now you can definitely take both. Another big change that I'm not so sure about, I found it a little bit weird, but I think it'll just take a bit of getting used to, is gas masks. Now, if you pick up a gas mask, it will just equip it straight away. And that's because it's now a manual thing. If you want to keep a gas mask in your bag, you have to specifically stow it. So if you pick it up and accidentally put it on, you need to go into your inventory and put it in your backpack. I think most people will slowly get used to just whenever they see a gas mask, automatically pressing the stow button. 
but it does mean that now you choose when you put the gas mask on. So you could do things like run into the gas if you don't mind coughing and then not put the gas mask on until you're nearly dead. Or, I mean, it does actually take some damage in your backpack, so I'm not sure if it would have any advantage doing that. But also, if you're trying to fight someone and you don't want to have like your ADS broken and stuff like that, you can choose not to put a gas mask on. And then obviously sometimes you might want to put a gas mask on maybe a little bit early before you go into the gas because then you won't have that kind of awkward transition or animation. It just gives you a lot more control, but it is something extra to think about. One change that I think maybe wasn't necessarily in the build that we were playing or it didn't work properly is that supposedly you should always have a pistol while you're swimming so whenever you get in the water now you should put a pistol out even if you don't have one as your primary or your secondary this will be really awesome especially for the sort of end game circles if they end up in the water although that should happen a bit less because there's less water on the map than there is on our masra but if that does happen, say if you're in Vondal or Sheikah Island, because those are still going to be in the game, you should automatically have a pistol. Now, when I tried this, I think one time I went into the water and I didn't have a pistol, it didn't work. And then the second time I went into the water, I did pull out a pistol automatically. But I'm not really sure if I had one as part of the weapons I was carrying anyway then. But I think it's a great change. It also applies to like ladders and mantling and stuff like that. That if you aim down sights while you're on a ladder, you should automatically pull out a pistol, whatever. Now, I think this does take a little bit of strategy out. Like, I know Flynn, who I play with all the time, he would often go specifically get a loadout with a pistol in if it looked like it was going to be a water finish because it gave you such a huge advantage against people who had, like, an assault rifle and an SMG or something like that. It takes that away, but I suppose you could still have a better pistol. I'm assuming it just gives you a really basic one, so maybe having a better pistol would give you that advantage still. I'm not really sure. I know for us, we definitely have won a bunch of Warzone games because we had pistols, because we came back from redeploy flares and stuff like that, and no one else did. And, you know, maybe it's not fair, but it was a nice way to win. There's been a few changes to the way perks work, so compared to the beginning of Warzone 2, you can now equip Ghost, but it's going to require movement, so if you stop moving, you will appear on the minimap as usual, and that's kind of designed because there's quite a lot of places on the map where you could sit, you know, on top of tall buildings and stuff like that, for example. So if you want to use Ghost, you really need to be that kind of player who's moving around all the time. Combat Scout is also coming back. Ted Timmon said that he absolutely loves it, so that's why it's coming back. And that means, you know, if you shoot an enemy, it will ping them for the entire team. Lots of people didn't like that. I thought it was pretty cool, but it's really useful, especially if you're playing with randoms and you're not communicating. I often play on European servers where loads of people are speaking different languages. Stuff like Combat Scout really, really helps with that. There's also some brand new perks like Shrouded where you drop a smoke grenade as soon as you're downed. So obviously, again, another one where really experienced teams will probably throw smoke grenades normally um, like because someone's down to give them a chance to self-revive or to have a chance to go revive them. But if you don't want to equip smoke grenades in your tactical, because I think they're trying to open up that choice a little bit, or you're maybe in a team that isn't as organized like that, that could be a really useful one. Irradiated makes you faster and take less damage while you're in the gas. So that's a perk maybe you'd want for a loadout in the later game. And maybe that could make you sort of do some gas plays. I've got a friend, Emil, who does these amazing gas plays in the final circles where he'll stay for ages in the gas. And with Irradiated, it makes that even more effective. There's also Resolute, which will increase your movement speed when you're damaged. So again, if you're the sort of player who likes to move around a lot, likes to get in those kind of scrappy gunfights, having something like that will mean that your movement will get even faster. And these sort of things sometimes stack. So I think you could have Resolute and you could put Stims on, and then that means that you would have incredible movement speed in a fight. And then I'm sure there'll be some crazy clips of people like sliding around, going in and out of buildings through different entrances, because they'll be so much faster than people that don't have these things equipped. There's also a bunch of new tacticals, lethals and killstreaks that are coming with Mon Warfare 3. So things like the Breacher Drone, which is that little thing you saw in the trailer for multiplayer, where you kind of throw it forwards in a straight line that slowly flies towards someone and explodes. There's also the Mosquito Drone, which is a thing that you kind of throw up in the air and it will guard an area and then it will like fly straight down and hit someone. That's something that I think the idea is that it's quite easy to shoot down, 
But if someone's busy, then maybe you'll be able to get them with it. And there's things like the Guardian Shield. I saw quite a lot of those in Warzone where, you know, they just seem quite common. And they take up the same slot as Mortars or Precision Airstrike, but it's a very different kind of kill streak where you put it down and it fires waves of energy or sound or something and kind of slows and disorients people. So you can use it to block off a doorway. Like I said, people can get past it. People can just run past it. But in theory, it should open up some new things and I'm sure it will get balanced to maybe be a little bit more effective. There's also some new bounties. I mean, well, not really new, but it's like a returning one. We have big game bounty coming back. This was something that I thought was an awesome addition in Warzone 1, where you can choose to go after kind of the most successful team on the map, the map, the team that's got the most kills, which means not only will you be able to take them out of the game, but you'll get better rewards because obviously they're a more dangerous team. I thought the big game bounty was absolutely awesome. It makes for a lot of fun for the big teams, you know, for those amazing teams, because it means people will be coming after them, but also for anyone else who just wants a bit of excitement, wants to challenge themselves. Then there's a change that I think is genius, and I hadn't really thought about this before, but this is to do with the nuke quest. So the champion's quest, they're making it so if you're on a contract, you know, you've got your five wins and then you've picked up a contract and you get killed, the people who killed you can pick up your contract. So they can grab that contract off you and they can try and complete it themselves. Now, there wasn't much clarity on like, can this happen multiple times? Like, will that contract always be in the game unless it goes into the gas or something? Or whether it's just the people that killed the initial people who did it? I've got no idea. But it should mean that the whole sort of nuke setup of people trying to get the elements, people trying to plant the nuke, should happen way more often. So we've been in loads of games where people have started the nuke contract and then just died quite early on and then nothing comes of it. This means that those games will kind of be exciting right until the end, I assume. Another cool addition that I thought was really good is horizontal zip lines. You have the zip lines that go up and down buildings like before. You have the redeploy balloons, but now you have zip lines that go kind of diagonally up and down across things like rivers or canyons, stuff like that just like Apex Legends really. They're really fun, you can drop off them whenever you want to, you can shoot while you're on them. It just gives you like a quick way of getting across some terrain that's quite difficult. You know, things like rivers that were normally a bit of a pain sort of slowed you down quite a lot. It gives you a chance to do it quickly, but obviously at the risk that you're super easy to shoot. Like you're very, very vulnerable while you're on them. We're near the end now, so thank you for sticking through this, but there's so many new things. This is why I kind of put that thumbnail of saying, like, is this Warzone free? This is one of the changes I absolutely love. I'll probably do a whole video about it at some point. But the train. The train is so different to what it was like before. Now, the train in the caboose, in that back carriage, it has a handbrake that you can just climb on a train, put it on, and it will bring the train to a very, very sudden stop. There's a UAV station on a the train, there's a buy station on a train that makes it a bit more useful, like the water taxis in Vondel. And then if you get to the front of the train, you can control it so you can start it up again if someone's pulled the handbrake, you can slow it down, you can even put it in reverse. So say if you need to get through um, the final circle and the train's heading out of the circle, you could hop on it and stop it or even put it in reverse to get it back in position. And then you've kind of got a little base because obviously it's got cover on it it's got a uav it's got a buy station obviously there is a risk that other people could potentially start moving it again but that's amazing like that opens up so many possibilities if the final circle is like somewhere along the route of the train even just having the uav station on it i think is genius like it'll be a pretty good strategy to land on it and there's like a bunch of orange boxes and stuff like that on it so it's a good place to land anyway but if you land on it then activate that uav you can travel around the map and find people who might not expect it to be coming. They might not expect it to be moving up on them. And then finally, in terms of like new stuff coming to the game, the Gulag. The Gulag is super simple, super small. It's very straightforward, like much smaller than the Almas or Gulag. I played it, I think I won about half of the games that I played in there. It seemed pretty good. And there's a couple of new additions to that. The most obvious one is that there's no more flag at the end of it, which never really made sense. Instead, when the flag would appear, when the time starts running out, a rope drops down in the middle. And if you can get on that rope and use your ascender, you will actually escape the Gulag doing that. They didn't really say what happens if both people try to do it, like one after the other, whether both of you can escape. I'm not really sure. I assume it's probably just the first person. 
There's also some kind of modifiers or mutators in it, which is really interesting. I had one of these where I went into the gulag and it was pitch black. I mean, literally pitch black. I didn't have night vision goggles. It was absolutely terrifying. I assume you probably can pick up night vision goggles on the floor, but I didn't find any. And yeah, that was absolutely horrible. Apparently that won't be in the game for launch, but it will be coming later at some point. Then there's a couple of other modifiers. Like one I had, you started with full armor instead of just having half armor. And you had like full ammo and stuff like that. So if you manage to win that gulag, you come back pretty well geared up back into the fight. And there was another one where there's just cash all over the place, all over the floor. So it's kind of... Do you want to spend a little bit extra time in the gulag trying to gather as much cash as possible or do you just want to win it quickly to get out? It kind of adds a little bit of risk reward which is really cool. Now that's kind of everything that I know about that's coming new to Modern Warfare 3 Warzone. I'm sure there's a bunch of other things I've forgotten that I saw while playing so there'll be a bunch more videos on this channel. We also know, just to clear up a couple of things for people, Almaz was going, so that's not going to be available in Modern Warfare 3 Warzone anymore, but the other two maps are um, Ashika Island and Vondel, and sometime in 2024, we're going to be getting Fortune's Keep and Rebirth Island back as well, which is pretty awesome, and Ranked isn't going to be there until 2024, so we're not going to have Ranked until sometime next year, which for me is kind of a good thing, because it means I can play with everyone without having to like worry about what rank they are and trying to keep up with of them and stuff like that and also plunder and resurgence are going to be there right at the beginning of season one now all of this stuff modern warfare free warzone is going to be coming at the beginning of season one so it's not coming november 10th it'll be sometime i assume at the beginning of december i haven't actually been told a date but i think there's a couple of dates floating around that might be accurate i'm not really sure but yeah we're going to be getting all this stuff at the beginning of december so I absolutely can't wait. Of course, I'll be streaming a bunch of it right here on the channel. Make sure you subscribe. There's going to be a ton more videos from other things that we found out about Warzone multiplayer zombies at Codnex. So make sure you subscribe, turn your notifications on, and I'll see you for the next one. Goodbye.